Sam Dyke has retired. The silent service now brings you the true story of the submarine's daughter and Dace. A wolf pack team which made history at the Battle of Lady Gulf. We call it the two Davids and Goliath because a twist of fate pitted these two small submarines against an entire Japanese fleet. And one of the two skippers was, in fact, named David. This is Commander David H. McClinton, skipper of the USS Garda and boss of the two submarine wolf pack. He hails from Marquette, Michigan. And this is his teammate, Commander B.D. Claggett, Baltimore, Maryland, skipper of the USS Dace. It is September 1944. Tonight, these two close friends are keeping a prearranged rendezvous in the Celebes Sea, north of Borneo. I guess you remember Chief Turner? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure do. New London, wasn't it? That's right, sir. How's everything been going, Chief? It's been going okay, sir. Our orders are to patrol the dangerous ground. Here, off the Palawan Passage. Yeah. Is this a new chart? Captured fairly recently. Got an extra one for you. Thanks. I hope it's more accurate than the one I had the last time I was up there. Lucky I didn't wind up on a reef. Of course, I guess if I did, you'd pull me off. I'm not so sure I wouldn't leave you there at that. What? I said I might leave you there. You mean that? I sure do. It meant the lives of hundreds of our other men a Japanese might cost us if he got away. And don't you forget it. All right. Okay, Dave. I'll do the same. Let's just hope it doesn't happen. Now, here's what I figure we're up against. MacArthur's due to land somewhere in the Philippines most any day now. Yeah. The enemy's bound to be expecting it. Their fleet's gonna have to go all out. Pull something really big. Yeah. Something big was building up, all right as the daughter and Dates continued northern towards their patrol area. The Japanese High Command, faced with certain defeat if MacArthur's forces recaptured the Philippines, were deciding to shoot the whole works to smash our amphibious landings. The show-go plan for all-out defense of the Philippines was activated. Show is a Japanese word meaning conquer. The main body of the Japanese fleet under Admiral Kurita was ordered north from Singapore. The fast carriers under Admiral Ozawa were ordered south from Japan. The third naval force under Admiral Shima steamed from Formosa. All three enemy prongs were converging on the Philippines, prepared to strike any beachhead. Such large-scale movements did not pass unobserved by the underwater eyes of our fleet. The Pasugo, under command of T.L. Wogan, made the first contact on Azawa's force as it speeded south from Japan. Other reports filtered into Admiral Nimitz on Guam. The enemy plan began to assume a predictable pattern. Carriers of the United States 3rd Fleet under Admiral Bull Halsey and the 7th Fleet under Admiral Kincaid prepared to secure and defend the beachhead. This, then, was the big picture. But to the crews of the daughter and the day scouting the treacherous waters off Palawan, cut off from the outside world, the picture was one of monotony. Endless days of constant scanning. Empty seas, constant surface and periscope watch, waiting. Waiting for the tip of a mast or a smudge of smoke on the horizon. A radar blimp. Waiting, killing time off duty, 85 men imprisoned in a steel cigar, counting the days till the return to home port and shore leave in Australia. At midnight before the morning of October 21st, the executive officer of the day, Lieutenant Commander Ben Benitez, hailing from San Juan, Puerto Rico, came up to the conning tower to relieve Commander Claggett. Morning, Captain. Oh, good morning. Thanks. Any excitement? No, nothing. Gets a little tiresome. Glad it's almost over. 
Still think we'll be heading home in a couple of days? Could be. Of course, last word I got from Dave McClinic, he had a hunch they may change our orders. Uh, he is hoping he's wrong. Who, oh, Dave? I wouldn't bet against him. For 11 years, he's never been wrong in my book, not on any count. Well, it's all yours, Ben. Stir up some action. If we don't bag something soon, we won't dare go home. A message from the darter. It's urgent. Intercept fast enemy ships proceeding on northeasterly course. Notice it said fast ships. That could be a task force. All ahead full. Course 325. Heads are all ahead full. Course 325. Meanwhile, the Darda, making her top speed of 19 knots, was trailing the enemy force, tracking its zigzag evasive action, falling slowly behind. But Dave McClinic was sending vital messages up ahead to the date, many miles to the north. Here was a perfect wolf pack double play in which McClinic directed his teammate toward an interception point four and a half hours in advance of the Japanese force. In effect, it was a forward pass how are we doing, Ben? Right on schedule, Captain. We'll hit the intercept point for the dawn attack at 4.30. Right on the nose. You hope. Well, yes, sir. I admit I'd feel better about our position if I had some star sights. Well, you're not going to get any tonight either. It's still overcast. Well, the Dada's falling further behind the Japanese, but she's feeding us all the dope we need. Just gave us the Japanese zigzag plan. Good, good. If we don't make interception, it won't be the darter's fault. It's a chance of a lifetime, all right. Dawn. 0430. The sea around the dace was empty. The minutes passed. 455. Nothing in sight. 515. Still no sign of the enemy. Radio, message from Darter. Enemy change course to west at dawn. Very well, radio. Tell them we'll continue the search to the westward. Aye, aye, sir. Continuing search to westward. Well, there you are, Ben. They just outmaneuvered us with that last turn. I'm glad it wasn't me. Wait for a while there, I'd muffed it. No, no, you made good your point of interception. Didn't run into any reefs. Well, it's a wonder. Missed a couple of them by a very thin blonde hair. Yeah. <laughs> Glad we were lucky about something. Well, I think you better break out the charts for the trip home. I want to check on the oil, fuel, and provisions. We're pretty low. Aye, aye, sir. Too bad we have to miss the show. But at least the dot has been able to report the contact and warn Bull Halsey. Yeah, it's better than nothing. At least we know they're on the move. We'll give it another hour, then secure the search. Aye, aye, sir. held a rendezvous to coordinate their plans for the return voyage. They might as well have saved themselves the trouble. It's radar contact from Donner. Maximum range. They say it could be ships or rain. Probably a rain squall or an overeager operator. Let's take a look at the scope. I've identified the contact, Captain. And it isn't rain, it's ships. Lots of them. How many do you make it? At least 30. Beautiful. Beautiful picture. That could be the main body of the Japanese task force. Ben, get confirmation to Darter and step on it. Aye, aye, sir. Over in the Darter, Dave McClinic immediately set the wheels in motion, including the waking up of his encoding officer, who had just started to dream of home. Hey, off, Slim, will you? I'm off watch. No, it's me, Harry. McClinic. Oh, yes, sir. Get your pencil. Encode this and send it to Halsey and Kincaid right away. Large force. Course 040. Speed 20 knots. Aye, aye, sir. Meanwhile, the day stood by, eagerly awaiting instructions. They weren't long in coming. Radio message from Darter. Close the enemy. All ahead, full! All ahead, full. Station the tracking party! Station the tracking party. Oh, no, not now. What is this, a game? Afraid not, sir. She's conked out on me again. Well, how serious is it? 
Well, it's a major repair. It may take quite a while. Well, fix it somehow. Every minute counts. This is fine. Just fine. This patrol. I guess we should have stood in port. While the radar operator worked frantically, the days continued at full speed, checking with the data for changes in Japanese course and speed. Running the calculated risk of branding one of those uncharted reefs or shoals in abundance throughout the dangerous ground. Well, I'm about ready to try her. A five hour job done in an hour and a half. I, I hope it works. Boy, oh boy, we're good set. Work. Good work. Well done. Good they, work. They look like big ships. Maybe battleships or large cruisers. 25, 30, 32 good, ships. Good, good, Ben, blow the ballast tanks dry. Get her just as high out of the water as you can. Tell the engine room on every fraction of speed they can give me. Aye, aye, sir. Put the low pressure blower on all main ballast tanks. Aye, aye, sir. The Darda was gaining attack position. Well, men, here's the pitch. In half an hour, at dawn, we're going to attack the whole doggone Japanese fleet. Well, how about that? The enemy force is steaming in two columns. We're deployed well ahead of them and laying for them. The days will hit them from one side, and we'll wallop them from the other. Between us, we can't miss. Zero hour. The daughter and the days drop below the surface to periscope depth and lay in wait for the fattest submarine target of all time. Every man's been at battle stations for 10 minutes, Captain. Aboard the Dace, as in the Darda, tension mounted unbearably as the minutes passed. Depth charges! Depth charges! Charges my eye. Those are Darter's torpedoes. She's getting her licks into the Japanese fleet. Bam! Just like the 4th of July. Her cruisers burn. Japanese are milling around in circles, firing all over the place. What a show! What a show! All right. Here they come. Stand by for a setup. Bang! Mark! Two, eight, six. Range, cruiser, mark. 2,300 yards. Down scope. Angle on the bow, 10 port. Now the success or failure of the Dace's torpedoes rested largely on the fire control party. Ranges, bearings, and angles on the bow had to be converted quickly and accurately into enemy courses and speeds. Make ready the forward torpedo tubes. we we'll fire six torpedoes. Let the first two ships go by. The third one looks like a heavy cruiser. All right, Captain. Screw noises are getting louder, Captain. Final bearing. Mark. Zero, three, one. Set. Fire! Fire one. Fire two. One. Two. Three. Four. Down scope. Take her down. All ahead, full. All ahead, full. Four hits out of six fired, that's not bad. I think we better get out of here. Later that day, having been successful in shaking off the destroyers, the two Davids came up to the surface for a breather. Of the Darda, Lt. 
Lieutenant Commander Ernest L. Swab of Brooklyn, New York, is joined by McClintock on the bridge. Commence reload. It's about time you got some sleep, isn't it? Sleep? What sleep? I've forgotten. Uh, you had some. Let me see. Uh, about 60 hours ago. Then we're about even. I hope we can find that damaged cruiser. Oh, she was lying dead in the water. Probably just where we left it. Too good to pass up. Let's go back and see if we can finish her off before dark. Order Dace to join up. Aye, aye, sir. The weary crews of the two Davids return to the area of the morning's action and submerge. They found what they were hoping for something they weren't hoping. Two aggressive acting destroyers. And they have come. She's in a Tago class cruiser, all right. She's definitely stopped, and there's not much chance of her getting away. Yeah. It'll be hard to get at her in daylight with the company she's keeping. I'm afraid that's out, Ernie. We'll get on a partial battery charge this afternoon and try a submerged night attack. Advise the days. Aye, aye, sir. As the wolf pack stalked its prey, trying to evade the destroyers, the enemy cruiser suddenly got underway, flipping from the scene at six knots. She's not going to get away from me now. I'm going to try and end around to the west. All ahead, Paul. Captain, we've been going through the worst part of the shoals at full speed. It's going to be murder. You just give us the best navigation you can. This is a calculated risk. Left, full rudder. Advise the base and tell her to attack when ready. Right. Daughter and Dace, ignoring the hazards of running aground, maneuvered in headlong chase to elude the destroyers and close on their target. Seven minutes past midnight, Commander Claggett was finally closing into attack position when there came a dispatch from the Darda, pregnant with meaning. Daughter's aground. She's what? That's all it said, just three words. We are aground. Then they radio quick middle of message. Take the deck. That's a tough one, all right. Yeah. Yeah, either way, I'm wrong. If I leave Dave McClinic parked on that reef, the Japanese will spot him as soon as it's daylight and blow him to pieces. If I stop to help him, the Japanese heavy cruiser gets clear away. That's the bind, all right. But one torpedo will probably finish it, too. According to the book, my job's to go after the cruiser. That's the only reason we're out here. What do you think McClintock would do in our place? Think? I don't think. I know darn well what he'd do. He'd go after the cruiser. What makes you so sure? We talked about it once. Anyway, his radio's out. We can't reach him. Captain speaking. The cruiser's picked up to seven last, Captain. Oh, okay, okay. Keep tracking her. No further orders. One thing is sure. We've got to do one thing or the other. Fast. You don't make this kind of decision fast. Sorry, Captain. Dave wasn't such a close personal friend of mine, it'd be a lot easier. I'd know then my judgment wasn't being swayed. There just isn't any right answer. Unless we forget about the cruiser. Chances are she's out for the rest of the war anyway. No, no. How can you be sure? We'll just have to keep after her. Let's go back to the bridge. <laughs> Last of the escorts, they sure know their business. Can't get close enough for a shot. Well, try a different approach. Battle stations! Battle stations! Just in case we get an opening. Hey, wait a minute. Hold everything. That moon coming out. And maybe get a little light on it. Hey, I can see the cruiser. Ben, she's damaged, hopelessly damaged. I think we can call the whole thing off. Suppose maybe we can get in one torpedo before we pull out? Just waste a torpedo. She's too far out of range. Besides, there's no question about it, Ben. She's out for the rest of the war. It's time we did something about our own guys. Give me a course back to the darter. Aye, aye, sir.
Claggett hurried to the rescue of the Darden, faced with a job that had to be finished by daylight or else. There she was, fast aground, and with a high tide going out. It looked hopeless. The dace moved up warily to the reef, as close as she dared. A bow line was thrown and secured to the Darden. Commander McClintock reluctantly decided to abandon ship. But first, code books and secret papers were assembled to be destroyed. Vital gear was demolished. Chief Turner performed the final rite, setting a time demolition charge to prevent the data from falling intact in enemy hands. The slow transfer of 85 men began. Tedious job with only two six-man rubber lifeboats available. David McClintock was the last man to come aboard the dace at 4 a.m. Why didn't you keep after the cruiser? Well, I saw the damage. She'll never fight again. I don't buy that. It's only an educated guess. Give me a better reason. The main reason, to my best judgment, is an attack was impossible. We tried, we tried repeatedly. We couldn't get past the destroyer screen. I'll buy the second answer, but not the first. Got any coffee on this bucket of bolts? Well, Dave, the past two days we've accomplished a primary mission to give timely warning. Sunk two cruisers, knocked out a third in the process. The way I feel right now, I'd trade the whole thing to have my ship back. So we lost a sub, but you saved the crew. No court-martial? I don't think they'll hang you. Well, I... I saved this much. Hey, that's... That's heavy enough to sink us along with the visiting firemen. Anyway, welcome aboard. It's gonna be a little cozy, though, with 160 of us. You won't hear me complaining, Clagg. <laughs> Before we get to Australia, we'll be down to mushroom soup and peanut butter sandwiches. Sounds delicious. Oh, uh, incidentally, our demolition charge is set for 445. Oh. Yeah, I think we better clear the immediate vicinity. Ben, set a course for home. Aye, aye, sir. And so, on a note of disaster, teeth of great triumph, this wolf pack team ended one of the unforgettable submarine patrols of World War II. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Now I would like to introduce you to the two Davids in real life. Captain David H. McClintock and Captain Bladen D. Claggett, the two skippers who, as you know, fired the first shots at the decisive battle of Lady Gull. Well, Dave, it must have been a satisfaction to learn you'd sunk the Jap Admiral's flagship right out from under him. Yes, I heard he floundered around in the water for quite a spell before they fished him out. It was Admiral Corita. And I hear it had a sort of reverse effect on his morale. I'm sure it didn't help any. And incidentally, Clagg, I agree with your exec. I think you made the right decision. Congratulations to you both. Be with us when the silent service reenacts another thrilling submarine story. Take your dogs and watch the light Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide From down, down underneath the sea Take the course for past the world In the future yet to that's the same as long as there's a 
Underneath the sea